Hello guys, welcome to Infosec Train. I am Sonika and today we are here to discuss some questions that are frequently asked in a cloud security engineer interview. So let's discuss about cloud security. As you all know, cloud security is one of the most rapidly growing areas of cyber security. All of the strategies, technologies and practices used to secure and protect data and applications hosted in the cloud is cloud security. If cloud security is the how then cloud security engineers are the who so let's move ahead to the questions part and i hope these interview questions may assist you in landing your dream job describe the saas pass and eas models cloud service offerings are saas pass and eas they are also known as cloud service models or cloud computing service models so saas stands for software as a service pass stands for platform as a service and ES stands for infrastructure as a service. Let's understand more about these models. So let's move to SaaS model. Software as a service give customers access to applications that are entirely hosted and run on the provider's servers. The applications, data and operating system are managed by providers. Clients are only responsible for obtaining their applications. Google Drive is an example of SaaS model. Next is PaaS model. Platform as a service can use cloud services to host their own applications, which are run on provider servers within a client's own sandbox space. Clients are in charge of their applications, data, and end user networks. Google App Engine is the example of PaaS model. And the last model is EaaS model. Infrastructure as a service provide clients with the hardware and remote connectivity frameworks. Only core cloud services are managed by providers. Users, end users devices and end users networks all must be managed by clients. Amazon Web Service is the example of EaaS model. What are the main characteristics of cloud computing? So cloud computing characteristics are as follows. First is on-demand self-service, broad network access, rapid elasticity, resource pooling, and measured services. Let's understand one by one. So the first is on-demand self-service. In this, cloud computing services do not require any human administrators. Users can provision, monitor, and manage computing resources as needed. Next is broad network access. In this. Computing services are typically delivered via standard networks and heterogeneous devices. Let's move to rapid elasticity. In this, IT resources for computing services should be able to scale out and in quickly and on as needed basis. When a user requests a service, it is provided to him and it is scaled down as soon as its demand is met. Next, resource pooling. Resource pooling occurs when an IT resources, for example, networks, services, storage, application, and services is shared in an individual manner across multiple applications and occupants. Multiple clients are served by the same physical resource. And the last is measured services. In measured services, the resource utilization is tracked for each application and occupant providing an account of what has been used to both the user and the resource provider. This is done for a variety of reasons, including billing, monitoring, and resource utilization. Mention the various cloud computing data centers. There are two cloud computing data centers. First is containerized data center and second is low density data center. So containerized data center includes data center infrastructures housed within a container. Containerized data centers can range from simple IT containers to comprehensive all-in-one systems that integrate the entire physical IT infrastructure. Low density data center. In this data center, we get a high level of performance in a low density data center. When we increase the density of servers in such a data center, we encounter a power issue. The area becomes hot due to the high density of servers. Heat and power are effectively managed in this scenario. To achieve high performance, we must optimize the number of servers in the data centers. 
what exactly is cloud architecture cloud architecture refers to the cloud computing components and sub components front end platform back end platform cloud based delivery and a network are typical components these elements work together to form cloud computing architecture what are the components of cloud computing architecture the components of cloud computing architecture are management software internet security client infrastructure and service let's understand more about these components so the first is management software in the backend this component manages components such as application service runtime cloud storage infrastructure and other security concerns it also establishes their coordination next is internet the internet serves as a bridge or medium between the front end and the back end it enables you to set up interaction and communication between the front end and the back end let's move to security security in the back end refers to the implementation of various security mechanisms to secure cloud systems resources files and infrastructure for end users client infrastructure a front end component that provides a graphical user interface also facilitates user interaction with the cloud and the last is service the service component controls which types of services you can access based on the client's need three cloud computing services are saas pas and es what is scalability in the cloud scalability is the hallmark of cloud because it is one of the cloud's defining features and the key driver of its growing popularity among enterprises let's understand what scalability is the capacity to increase or reduce id resources as necessary to meet increasing or decreasing demand is referred to as scalability in cloud computing what are the various levels that make up cloud architecture there are five levels in the cloud architecture which are as follows so the first level is cloud controller second is storage controller third one is node controller fourth is cluster controller and the last one is walrus so the cloud controller is the primary controller component in charge of managing the entire system it serves as the primary point of access to the cloud for all the users and administrators storage controller is the eucalyptus storage service that is implemented in the cloud interface node controller is responsible for updating node objects when new servers are created in cloud infrastructure cluster controller cluster controller is in charge of keeping all instances of the virtual network running walrus is the controller that sends access messages to eucalyptus storage devices how can you keep your data safe when transferred to the cloud the data must be encrypted and it should be ensured that data is not leaked while moving to the cloud to safeguard data while migrating to the cloud there are various safeguards the first is encrypt your data next configure user permissions create strong passwords protect end user devices and avoid uploading sensitive information what exactly is eucalyptus eucalyptus is the abbreviation for elastic utility computing architecture for linking your programs eucalyptus is an open source software platform for delivering infrastructure as a service in a hybrid cloud computing or private cloud computing environment in cloud computing eucalyptus combines existing virtualized frameworks to create cloud resources for storage as a service network as a service and infrastructure as a service What role does API play in cloud services? API stands for Application Programming Interface and it is a critical component of cloud platforms and it enable us to use cloud services. API play in cloud services in the following context such as it specifies how one or more programs should communicate with one another. It also facilitates the building of application and the integration of cloud services with other platforms. and the last is it also reduces the need to write entire programs what role does the performance cloud play in cloud computing the performance cloud enables the fastest possible data transfer and it involved in high performance computing development which is commonly used by experts let's understand 
the role of performance cloud play in cloud computing cloud performance monitoring and testing tools assist organizations in gaining visibility into their cloud environments by assessing performance using specific metrics and techniques efficient cloud performance is critical for ensuring business continuity and providing access to cloud services to all relevant parties what is amazon sqs amazon sqs is amazon simple queue service uh, and it can be described as a communicator amazon sqs messages are utilized between amazon components to connect with various connectors let's discuss more precisely about amazon sqs so amazon sqs is a dependable and high performance solution that provide queues to support message transactions between applications or among application components this tool automates the communication aspects of software development freeing up developers time to focus on programming what role does buffer play in amazon web service a buffer is used to improve system efficiency in traffic or load or buffer assist in the coordination of several components the buffer maintains the harmony between those components while also causing them to work at the same speed to complete the operation faster what exactly is a systems integrator a systems integrator in cloud computing is a person or firm who specialize in compacting component subsystem so let's understand what exactly systems integrator is a systems integrator is a person or a company who creates computing subsystems for clients by combining hardware software networking and storage products from various vendors a systems integrator can help a business align cheaper pre-configured components and commercial off the shelf software to meet key business objectives define geo targeting in cloud front geo targeting enables organizations to show personalized information and it helps in producing customized content let's understand geo targeting in cloud front by using amazon cloud front we can detect the country from where end users are requesting our content this information can be passed to our origin server by amazon cloud front based on different countries we can generate different content for different versions of the same content in this way we are able to target our end users based on their geographical locations what stages are involved in implementing a cloud formation solution following are the steps step 1 pick a template step 2 make sure you have prepared any required items for the stack step 3 create the stack step 4 monitor the progress of stack creation fifth step use your stack resources and the last is clean up so let's understand more about these steps build a different cloud formation framework or reuse an existing one in json or yaml format save the code to an s3 bucket that will be a storage for the code to access the container and build a layer on your framework use aws cloud formation and cloud formation examines the file identifies the resources that are called their order and the relationships between them and then provisions the services one by one what are the benefits of azure auto scaling auto scaling is a feature of azure that allows automatic scaling auto scaling assists in managing changing market conditions in cloud services mobile services virtual machines and websites Here are a few of its benefits like improves application performance in response to demand scale up or down and exceptionally cost effective In Azure SQL what is federation SQL Azure federation is a set of tools that allow programmers to access and share data sets in SQL Azure for scalability Azure SQL has implemented federation and it aids administrator by facilitating data division it allows users to access information hosted in the cloud or users can create their databases on exchange databases with one another it also minimizes the probability of a single point of failure and it saves cost by only using cloud resources when they are needed
Is there a substitute for the console for logging into the cloud environment? The AWS CloudFormation console allows you to create, monitor, update, and delete stacks directly from your web browser. This section provides instructions for using the CloudFormation console to perform common tasks. Following are some resources that can assist you with logging into AWS resources are Putty, AWS CLI for Linux, AWS CLI for Windows, AWS CLI for Windows CMD, AWS SDK, and Eclipse. Describe a DDoS attack and how it can be mitigated. A distributed denial of service attack on a website or device occurs when a malicious attacker sends a flood of traffic from a single or multiple sources. Let's understand how it can be mitigated. DDoS is a type of cyber attack in which the offender visits a website and creates several sessions to prevent authorized customers from using the service. There are some native tools that can assist you in preventing DDoS attack on AWS services are AWS Shield, AWS WAF, Amazon CloudFront, ELB, and VPC.